So not only do you have inflation, but after that, you still have something else that is causing a great conundrum. We think inflation happened, we still have to find proof of it. But there's another big problem that we don't understand. One of the big questions is about the nature of stuff in the universe. There's a point when the universe is perhaps a trillionth of a second old, the temperature's 10 trillion degrees. It's so full of energy, it's, so, it's completely energy rather than the matter. And you have pairs of particles and antiparticles are created. Oops, I don't know what that is. Let's go back. Um, you know, pure energy creates pairs of particles and antiparticles. And what these are, if you have a particle, for every particle there is an antiparticle that is a mirror image of the normal stuff. It's the same in every way except the electric charges are reversed. So for an electron, you have a positive proton. For a proton, you have a negative antiproton. Neutrino, the spin goes a different ways. So for every atom of hydrogen, you'll have an atom of antihydrogen. So the idea that all of this is created in the early universe, when it's so hot, so energetic, after that, the universe expands and it cools down. You no longer have enough energy to create these pairs, this, this matter. The problem is that we expect that we expect this, that you would have the same amount of matter as you would have antimatter created. Now, each of these pairs, if they meet each other, they'll collide, they'll annihilate and, annihilate and return to pure energy. So if you have a universe that's full of matter and antimatter, you'd expect that all these annihilations will have occurred and they will have released energy. And so we would be left with a universe that is just energy. Obviously, that conflicts with observations. <laughs> what we see is this kind of universe, which is all matter, with the only occasional bit of antimatter out there. What has happened to give us a universe full of stuff? Our theory says it should have been created, antimatter and matter should have been created in equal quantities, but it's patently not true. Now, it could be there are bits of the universe out there that are completely antimatter, big reservoirs of antimatter that have yet to meet other reservoirs of matter. Well, that doesn't quite tally because the universe looks the same in all directions. Maybe all these annihilations have happened, but there was an imbalance, an asymmetry in how the matter and antimatter was created in the first place. And again, that doesn't quite tally with what we understand. This, for example, could be tackled with the Large Hadron Collider, these high-energy collisions. They're going to be studying these new collisions to see if there's any inherent symmetry. Remember, those collisions mimic the early, the early universe, high-energy collisions. Is there an asymmetry in terms of the amount of matter versus antimatter that's being created that could then illuminate why our whole universe is full of stuff rather than not stuff? And if you want to continue getting speculative, one very fashionable idea is that we are just one universe amongst many that we just occupy one possible universe amongst an infinite set of parallel or alternate universes that all patchwork together to create something called, that goes by the name of the multiverse. It could be these are cyclic universes, or if you want to have multidimensional spaces, maybe you've got bubbles or pockets where you have continued... Most of the multidimensional spaces carry on with the inflation, expanding away. Maybe you've got pockets where the inflation stops, and each of those bubbles, those pockets, turns into a universe. You can speculate away. Here, you could have different laws of physics in different universes. You could have the same laws of physics, but you've got in it different initial conditions. You could have, as I say, this infinite multiverse patchwork. Sometimes the ideas arise out of an appeal of the anthropic principle, which is that we naturally inhabit the universe that is fine-tuned to support uh, life like ours. But the problem with all of this multiverse stuff, for me, anyway, it's interesting, it's fascinating, it is truly blue sky science. There is a point, though, you have to question whether it's true science. It is speculation, it is thought experiment. We are so far removed from producing any observable thing that could check these theories, could check these ideas. And it's quite unlikely to produce observable consequences in the near future. It may reap dividends for our physics decades or even centuries in the future, but I wouldn't describe this as one of the tangible problems that we can solve, certainly from the astronomical viewpoint. <laughs>